Artificial Intelligence, Wikipedia Article Audio Collective Intelligence, Collective Action, Self-Organized Criticality, Herd Mentality, Phase Transition, Agent-Based Modeling, Synchronization, and Colony Optimization, Particle Swarm Optimization Social Network Analysis, Small World Networks, Community Identification, Centrality, Motifs, Graph Theory, Scaling, Robustness, Systems Biology, Dynamic Networks History Basics Evolutionary Computation, Genetic Algorithms, Genetic Programming, Artificial Life, Machine Learning, Evolutionary Developmental Biology, Artificial Intelligence, Evolutionary Robotics Reaction Diffusion Systems, Partial Differential Equations, Dissipative Structures, Percolation, Cellular Automata, Spatial Ecology, Self-Replication, Spatial Evolutionary Biology Operationalization, Feedback, Self-Reference, Goal-Oriented, System Dynamics, Sense-Making, Entropy, Cybernetics, Autopoiesis, Information Theory, Computation Theory Ordinary Differential Equations, Iterative Maps, Phase Space, Attractors, Stability Analysis, Population Dynamics Chaos, multi-stability, bifurcation, rational choice theory, bounded rationality, irrational behavior, problems. Artificial intelligence is intelligence demonstrated by machines, in contrast to the natural intelligence displayed by humans and other animals. In computer science AI research is defined as the study of intelligent agents, any device that perceives its environment and takes actions that maximize its chance of successfully achieving its goals. Colloquially, the term artificial intelligence is applied when a machine mimics cognitive functions that humans associate with other human minds, such as learning and problem solving. See Glossary of Artificial Intelligence The scope of AI is disputed, as machines become increasingly capable, tasks considered as requiring intelligence are often removed from the definition, a phenomenon known as the AI effect, leading to the quip AI is whatever hasn't been done yet. For instance, Optical character recognition is frequently excluded from artificial intelligence, having become a routine technology. Capabilities generally classified as AI as of 2017 include successfully understanding human speech, competing at the highest level in strategic game systems, autonomous cars, intelligent routing in content delivery networks, military simulations and interpreting complex data, including images and videos. Reasoning, Problem Solving Artificial intelligence was founded as an academic discipline in 1956, and in the years since has experienced several waves of optimism, followed by disappointment and the loss of funding followed by new approaches, success, and renewed funding. For most of its history, AI research has been divided into subfields that often fail to communicate with each other. These subfields are based on technical considerations, such as particular goals, the use of particular tools, or deep philosophical differences. Subfields have also been based on social factors. The traditional problems of AI research include reasoning, knowledge, planning, learning, natural language processing, perception and the ability to move and manipulate objects. General intelligence is among the field's long-term goals. 
Approaches include statistical methods, computational intelligence, and traditional symbolic AI. Many tools are used in AI, including versions of search and mathematical optimization, neural networks, and methods based on statistics, probability and economics. The AI field draws upon computer science, mathematics, psychology, linguistics, philosophy, and many others. The field was founded on the claim that human intelligence can be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. This raises philosophical arguments about the nature of the mind and the ethics of creating artificial beings endowed with human-like intelligence, issues which have been explored by myth, fiction, and philosophy since antiquity. Some people also consider AI to be a danger to humanity if it progresses unabatedly. Others believe that AI, unlike previous technological revolutions, will create a risk of mass unemployment. Knowledge Representation In the 21st century, AI techniques have experienced a resurgence following concurrent advances in computer power, large amounts of data, and theoretical understanding, and AI techniques have become an essential part of the technology industry, helping to solve many challenging problems in computer science. Planning While thought-capable artificial beings appeared as storytelling devices in antiquity, the idea of actually trying to build a machine to perform useful reasoning may have begun with Ramon Lyell. With his calculus ratiocinator, Gottfried Leibniz extended the concept of the calculating machine, intending to perform operations on concepts rather than numbers. Since the 19th century, artificial beings are common in fiction, as in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein or Carol Apec's R.U.R. Learning The study of mechanical or formal reasoning began with philosophers and mathematicians in antiquity. The study of mathematical logic led directly to Alan Turing's theory of computation, which suggested that a machine, by shuffling symbols as simple as zero and one, could simulate any conceivable act of mathematical deduction. This insight, that digital computers can simulate any process of formal reasoning, is known as the Church-Turing thesis. Along with concurrent discoveries in neurobiology, information theory, and cybernetics, this led researchers to consider the possibility of building an electronic brain. The first work that is now generally recognized as AI was McAlouch and Pitt's 1943 formal design for Turing complete artificial neurons. The field of AI research was born at a workshop at Dartmouth College in 1956. Attendees Alan Newell, Herbert Simon, John McCarthy, Marvin Minsky, and Arthur Samuel became the founders and leaders of AI research. They and their students produced programs that the press described as astonishing, computers were learning checkers strategies, solving word problems in algebra, proving logical theorems and speaking English. By the middle of the 1960s, research in the U.S. was heavily funded by the Department of Defense and laboratories had been established around the world. AI's founders were optimistic about the future, Herbert Simon predicted, machines will be capable, within 20 years, of doing any work a man can do. Marvin Minsky agreed, writing, within a generation, the problem of creating artificial intelligence will substantially be solved. Natural Language Processing they failed to recognize the difficulty of some of the remaining tasks. Progress slowed and in 1974, in response to the criticism of Sir James Lighthill and ongoing pressure from the U.S. Congress to fund more productive projects, both the U.S. and British governments cut off exploratory research in AI. 
The next few years would later be called an AI winter, a period when obtaining funding for AI projects was difficult. In the early 1980s, AI research was revived by the commercial success of expert systems, a form of AI program that simulated the knowledge and analytical skills of human experts. By 1985 the market for AI had reached over a billion dollars. At the same time, Japan's fifth-generation computer project inspired the U.S. and British governments to restore funding for academic research. However, beginning with the collapse of the Lisp machine market in 1987, AI once again fell into disrepute, and a second, longer-lasting hiatus began. In the late 1990s and early 21st century, AI began to be used for logistics, data mining, medical diagnosis, and other areas. The success was due to increasing computational power, greater emphasis on solving specific problems, new ties between AI and other fields and a commitment by researchers to mathematical methods and scientific standards. Deep Blue became the first computer chess playing system to beat a reigning world chess champion, Garry Kasparov on May 11, 1997. Advanced statistical techniques, access to large amounts of data and faster computers enabled advances in machine learning and perception. By the mid-2010s, machine learning applications were used throughout the world. In a Jeopardy! quiz show exhibition match, IBM's question answering system, Watson, defeated the two greatest Jeopardy! champions, Brad Rutter and Ken Jennings, by a significant margin. The Kinect, which provides a 3D body motion interface for the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One use algorithms that emerged from lengthy AI research as do intelligent personal assistants in smartphones. In March 2016, AlphaGo won four out of five games of Go in a match with Go champion Lee Sedol, becoming the first computer Go playing system to beat a professional Go player without handicaps. In the 2017 Future of Go Summit AlphaGo won a three-game match with KG, who at the time continuously held the world number one ranking for two years. This marked the completion of a significant milestone in the development of artificial intelligence as Go is an extremely complex game, more so than chess. According to Bloomberg's Jack Clark, 2015 was a landmark year for artificial intelligence, with the number of software projects that use AI within Google increased from a sporadic usage in 2012 to more than 2,700 projects. Clark also presents factual data indicating that error rates in image processing tasks have fallen significantly since 2011. He attributes this to an increase in affordable neural networks, due to a rise in cloud computing infrastructure and to an increase in research tools and data sets. Other cited examples include Microsoft's development of a Skype system that can automatically translate from one language to another and Facebook's system that can describe images to blind people. Perception a typical AI perceives its environment and takes actions that maximize its chance of successfully achieving its goals. An AI's intended goal function can be simple or complex. Goals can be explicitly defined, or can be induced. If the AI is programmed for reinforcement learning, goals can be implicitly induced by rewarding some types of behavior and punishing others. Alternatively, an evolutionary system can induce goals by using a fitness function to mutate and preferentially replicate high-scoring AI systems, this is similar to how animals evolved to innately desire certain goals such as finding food, or how dogs can be bred via artificial selection to possess desired traits. Some AI systems, 
such as nearest neighbor, instead reason by analogy, these systems are not generally given goals, except to the degree that goals are somehow implicit in their training data. Such systems can still be benchmarked if the non-goal system is framed as a system whose goal is to successfully accomplish its narrow classification task. Motion and Manipulation AI often revolves around the use of algorithms. An algorithm is a set of unambiguous instructions that a mechanical computer can execute. A complex algorithm is often built on top of other, simpler, algorithms. A simple example of an algorithm is the following recipe for optimal play at tic-tac-toe. Many AI algorithms are capable of learning from data they can enhance themselves by learning new heuristics, or can themselves write other algorithms. Some of the learners described below, including Bayesian networks, decision trees, and nearest neighbor, could theoretically, if given infinite data, time, and memory, learn to approximate any function, including whatever combination of mathematical functions would best describe the entire world. These learners could therefore, in theory, derive all possible knowledge, by considering every possible hypothesis and matching it against the data. In practice, it is almost never possible to consider every possibility, because of the phenomenon of combinatorial explosion, where the amount of time needed to solve a problem grows exponentially. Much of AI research involves figuring out how to identify and avoid considering broad swaths of possibilities that are unlikely to be fruitful. For example, when viewing a map and looking for the shortest driving route from Denver to New York in the east, one can in most cases skip looking at any path through San Francisco or other areas far to the west, thus, an AI-wielding and path-finding algorithm like A** can avoid the combinatorial explosion that would ensue if every possible route had to be ponderously considered in turn. Learners work on the basis that strategies, algorithms, and inferences that worked well in the past are likely to continue working well in the future. These inferences can be obvious such as since the sun rose every morning for the last 10,000 days, it will probably rise tomorrow morning as well. They can be nuanced, such as X percent of families have geographically separate species with color variants, so there is an Y percent chance that undiscovered black swans exist. Learners also work on the basis of Occam's razor, the simplest theory that explains the data is the likeliest. Therefore, to be successful, a learner must be designed such that it prefers simpler theories to complex theories, except in cases where the complex theory is proven substantially better. Settling on a bad, overly complex theory gerrymandered to fit all the past training data is known as overfitting. Many systems attempt to reduce overfitting by rewarding a theory in accordance with how well it fits the data, but penalizing the theory in accordance with how complex the theory is. Besides classic overfitting, learners can also disappoint by learning the wrong lesson. A toy example is that an image classifier trained only on pictures of brown horses and black cats might conclude that all brown patches are likely to be horses. A real-world example is that, unlike humans, current image classifiers don't determine the spatial relationship between components of the picture, instead, they learn abstract patterns of pixels that humans are oblivious to but that linearly correlate with images of certain types of real objects. Faintly superimposing such a pattern on a legitimate image results in an adversarial image that the system misclassifies. The overall research goal of artificial intelligence is to create technology that allows computers and machines to function in an intelligent manner. 
The general problem of simulating intelligence has been broken down into sub-problems. These consist of particular traits or capabilities that researchers expect an intelligent system to display. The traits described below have received the most attention. Social Intelligence Creativity General Intelligence Approaches Early researchers developed algorithms that imitated step-by-step -step reasoning that humans use when they solve puzzles or make logical deductions. By the late 1980s and 1990s, AI research had developed methods for dealing with uncertain or incomplete information, employing concepts from probability and economics. Human beings ordinarily use fast, intuitive judgments rather than step-by-step -step deduction that early AI research was able to model. AI has progressed using sub-symbolic problem-solving, embodied agent approaches emphasize the importance of sensory motor skills to higher reasoning, neural net research attempts to simulate the structures inside the brain that give rise to this skill, statistical approaches to AI mimic the human ability to guess. Knowledge representation and knowledge engineering are central to AI research. Many of the problems machines are expected to solve will require extensive knowledge about the world. Among the things that AI needs to represent are, objects, properties, categories, and relations between objects, situations, events, states, and time, causes and effects, knowledge about knowledge, and many other, less well-researched domains. A representation of what exists is an ontology, the set of objects, relations, concepts, and properties formally described so that software agents can interpret them. The semantics of these are captured as description logic concepts, roles, and individuals, and typically implemented as classes, properties, and individuals in the web ontology language. The most general ontologies are called upper ontologies, which attempt to provide a foundation for all other knowledge by acting as mediators between domain ontologies that cover specific knowledge about a particular knowledge domain. Such formal knowledge representations are suitable for content-based indexing and retrieval, scene interpretation, clinical decision support, knowledge discovery via automated reasoning, etc. Video events are often represented as SWRL rules, which can be used, among others, to automatically generate subtitles for constrained videos. Among the most difficult problems in knowledge representation are Intelligent agents must be able to set goals and achieve them. They need a way to visualize the future or representation of the state of the world and be able to make predictions about how their actions will change it and be able to make choices that maximize the utility of available choices. In classical planning problems, the agent can assume that it is the only system acting in the world, allowing the agent to be certain of the consequences of its actions. However, if the agent is not the only actor, then it requires that the agent can reason under uncertainty. This calls for an agent that can not only assess its environment and make predictions, but also evaluate its predictions and adapt based on its assessment. Multi-agent planning uses the cooperation and competition of many agents to achieve a given goal. Emergent behavior such as this is used by evolutionary algorithms and swarm intelligence. Cybernetics and Brain Simulation Machine learning, a fundamental concept of AI research since the field's inception, is the study of computer algorithms that improve automatically through experience. Unsupervised learning is the ability to find patterns in a stream of input. Supervised learning includes both classification and numerical regression. 
classification is used to determine what category something belongs in, after seeing a number of examples of things from several categories. Regression is the attempt to produce a function that describes the relationship between inputs and outputs and predicts how the outputs should change as the inputs change. In reinforcement learning the agent is rewarded for good responses and punished for bad ones. The agent uses this sequence of rewards and punishments to form a strategy for operating in its problem space. These three types of learning can be analyzed in terms of decision theory, using concepts like utility. The mathematical analysis of machine learning algorithms and their performance is a branch of theoretical computer science known as computational learning theory. Within developmental robotics, developmental learning approaches are elaborated upon to allow robots to accumulate repertoires of novel skills through autonomous self-exploration, social interaction with human teachers, and the use of guidance mechanisms. Symbolic Cognitive Simulation Logic-based Natural language processing gives machines the ability to read and understand human language. A sufficiently powerful natural language processing system would enable natural language user interfaces and the acquisition of knowledge directly from human-written sources, such as newswire texts. Some straightforward applications of natural language processing include information retrieval, text mining, question answering and machine translation. A common method of processing and extracting meaning from natural language is through semantic indexing. Although these indexes require a large volume of user input, it is expected that increases in processor speeds and decreases in data storage costs will result in greater efficiency. Machine perception is the ability to use input from sensors to deduce aspects of the world. Computer vision is the ability to analyze visual input. A few selected sub-problems are speech recognition, facial recognition, and object recognition. The field of robotics is closely related to AI. Intelligence is required for robots to handle tasks such as object manipulation and navigation, with sub-problems such as localization, mapping, and motion planning. These systems require that an agent is able to, be spatially cognizant of its surroundings, learn from and build a map of its environment, figure out how to get from one point in space to another, and execute that movement. Effective computing is the study and development of systems that can recognize, interpret, process, and simulate human affects. It is an interdisciplinary field spanning computer sciences, psychology, and cognitive science. While the origins of the field may be traced as far back as the early philosophical inquiries into emotion, the more modern branch of computer science originated with Rosalind Picard's 1995 paper on effective computing. A motivation for the research is the ability to simulate empathy, where the machine would be able to interpret human emotions and adapts its behavior to give an appropriate response to those emotions. Antilogic or Scruffy Emotion and social skills are important to an intelligent agent for two reasons. First, being able to predict the actions of others by understanding their motives and emotional states allow an agent to make better decisions. Concepts such as game theory, decision theory, necessitate that an agent be able to detect and model human emotions. Second, in an effort to facilitate human-computer interaction, an intelligent machine may want to display emotions to appear more sensitive to the emotional dynamics of human interaction. A subfield of AI addresses creativity both theoretically and practically. 
Many researchers think that their work will eventually be incorporated into a machine with artificial general intelligence, combining all the skills mentioned above and even exceeding human ability in most or all these areas. A few believe that anthropomorphic features like artificial consciousness or an artificial brain may be required for such a project. Many of the problems above also require that general intelligence be solved. For example, even specific straightforward tasks, like machine translation, require that a machine read and write in both languages, follow the author's argument, know what is being talked about, and faithfully reproduce the author's original intent. A problem like machine translation is considered AI complete, but all of these problems need to be solved simultaneously in order to reach human level machine performance. There is no established unifying theory or paradigm that guides AI research. Researchers disagree about many issues. A few of the most long standing questions that have remained unanswered are these. Should artificial intelligence simulate natural intelligence by studying psychology or neurobiology? Or is human biology as irrelevant to AI research as bird biology is to aeronautical engineering? Can intelligent behavior be described using simple, elegant principles? Or does it necessarily require solving a large number of completely unrelated problems? Can intelligence be reproduced using high-level symbols, similar to words and ideas? Or does it require sub-symbolic processing? John Hogeland, who coined the term GoFe, also proposed that AI should more properly be referred to as synthetic intelligence, a term which has since been adopted by some non-GoFe researchers. Stuart Shapiro divides AI research into three approaches, which he calls computational psychology, computational philosophy, and computer science. Computational psychology is used to make computer programs that mimic human behavior. Computational philosophy is used to develop an adaptive, free-flowing computer mind. Implementing computer science serves the goal of creating computers that can perform tasks that only people could previously accomplish. Together, the human-esque behavior, mind, and actions make up artificial intelligence. In the 1940s and 1950s, a number of researchers explored the connection between neurobiology, information theory, and cybernetics. Some of them built machines that used electronic networks to exhibit rudimentary intelligence, such as W. Gray Walter S. Turtles and the Johns Hopkins Beast. Many of these researchers gathered for meetings of the Teleological Society at Princeton University and the Ratio Club in England. By 1960, this approach was largely abandoned, although elements of it would be revived in the 1980s. When access to digital computers became possible in the middle 1950s, AI research began to explore the possibility that human intelligence could be reduced to symbol manipulation. The research was centered in three institutions, Carnegie Mellon University, Stanford, and MIT, and each one developed its own style of research. John Hogeland named these approaches to AI good old-fashioned AI or GoFe. During the 1960s, symbolic approaches had achieved great success at simulating high-level thinking in small demonstration programs. Approaches based on cybernetics or neural networks were abandoned or pushed into the background. Researchers in the 1960s and the 1970s were convinced that symbolic approaches would eventually succeed in creating a machine with artificial general intelligence and considered this the goal of their field. Economist Herbert Simon and Alan Newell studied human problem-solving skills and attempted to formalize them, and their work laid the foundations of the field of artificial intelligence 
as well as cognitive science, operations research, and management science. Their research team used the results of psychological experiments to develop programs that simulated the techniques that people use to solve problems. This tradition, centered at Carnegie Mellon University would eventually culminate in the development of the SOAR architecture in the middle 1980s. Unlike Newell and Simon, John McCarthy felt that machines did not need to simulate human thought but should instead try to find the essence of abstract reasoning and problem-solving, regardless of whether people used the same algorithms. His laboratory at Stanford focused on using formal logic to solve a wide variety of problems, including knowledge representation, planning, and learning. Logic was also the focus of the work at the University of Edinburgh and elsewhere in Europe which led to the development of the programming language Prolog and the science of logic programming. Knowledge-based Subsymbolic Researchers at MIT found that solving difficult problems in vision and natural language processing required ad hoc solutions they argued that there was no simple and general principle that would capture all the aspects of intelligent behavior. Roger Skank described their anti-logic approaches as scruffy. Common sense knowledge bases are an example of scruffy AI, since they must be built by hand one complicated concept at a time. When computers with large memories became available around 1970, researchers from all three traditions began to build knowledge into AI applications. This knowledge revolution led to the development and deployment of expert systems, the first truly successful form of AI software. The knowledge revolution was also driven by the realization that enormous amounts of knowledge would be required by many simple AI applications. Embodied Intelligence By the 1980s progress in symbolic AI seemed to stall and many believed that symbolic systems would never be able to imitate all the processes of human cognition, especially perception, robotics learning and pattern recognition. A number of researchers began to look into subsymbolic approaches to specific AI problems. Subsymbolic methods manage to approach intelligence without specific representations of knowledge. Computational intelligence and soft computing. Statistical. Integrating the approaches. Tools. Search and optimization Logic Probabilistic methods for uncertain reasoning Classifiers and statistical learning methods Artificial neural networks Deep feed-forward neural networks Deep recurrent neural networks Languages Evaluating progress Applications This includes embodied, situated, behavior-based, and Nouvelle AI. Researchers from the related field of robotics, such as Rodney Brooks, rejected symbolic AI and focused on the basic engineering problems that would allow robots to move and survive. Their work revived the non-symbolic viewpoint of the early cybernetics researchers of the 1950s and reintroduced the use of control theory in AI. This coincided with the development of the embodied mind thesis in the related field of cognitive science, the idea that aspects of the body are required for higher intelligence. Interest in neural networks and connectionism was revived by David Rumelhart and others in the middle of the 1980s. Neural networks are an example of soft computing dash they are solutions to problems which cannot be solved with complete logical certainty, and where an approximate solution is often sufficient. Other soft computing approaches to AI include fuzzy systems, evolutionary computation, and many statistical tools. 
The application of soft computing to AI is studied collectively by the emerging discipline of computational intelligence. In the 1990s, AI researchers developed sophisticated mathematical tools to solve specific sub-problems. These tools are truly scientific, in the sense that their results are both measurable and verifiable, and they have been responsible for many of AI's recent successes. The shared mathematical language has also permitted a high level of collaboration with more established fields. Stuart Russell and Peter Norvig describe this movement as nothing less than a revolution and the victory of the NEETS. Critics argue that these techniques are too focused on particular problems and have failed to address the long-term goal of general intelligence. There is an ongoing debate about the relevance and validity of statistical approaches in AI, exemplified in part by exchanges between Peter Norvig and Noam Chomsky. In the course of 60 or so years of research, AI has developed a large number of tools to solve the most difficult problems in computer science. A few of the most general of these methods are discussed below. Many problems in AI can be solved in theory by intelligently searching through many possible solutions, reasoning can be reduced to performing a search. For example, Logical proof can be viewed as searching for a path that leads from premises to conclusions, where each step is the application of an inference rule. Planning algorithms search through trees of goals and sub-goals, attempting to find a path to a target goal, a process called means-ends analysis. Robotics algorithms for moving limbs and grasping objects use local searches in configuration space. Many learning algorithms use search algorithms based on optimization. Simple exhaustive searches are rarely sufficient for most real-world problems, the search space quickly grows to astronomical numbers. The result is a search that is too slow or never completes. The solution, for many problems, is to use heuristics or rules of thumb that prioritize choices in favor of those that are more likely to reach a goal, and to do so in a shorter number of steps. In some search methodologies heuristics can also serve to entirely eliminate some choices that are unlikely to lead to a goal. Heuristics supply the program with a best guess for the path on which the solution lies. Heuristics limit the search for solutions into a smaller sample size. A very different kind of search came to prominence in the 1990s, based on the mathematical theory of optimization. For many problems, it is possible to begin the search with some form of a guess and then refine the guess incrementally until no more refinements can be made. These algorithms can be visualized as blind hill climbing, we begin the search at a random point on the landscape, and then, by jumps or steps, we keep moving our guess uphill, until we reach the top. Other optimization algorithms are simulated annealing, beam search and random optimization. Evolutionary computation uses a form of optimization search. For example, they may begin with a population of organisms and then allow them to mutate and recombine, selecting only the fittest to survive each generation. Forms of evolutionary computation include swarm intelligence algorithms and evolutionary algorithms. Logic is used for knowledge representation and problem solving, but it can be applied to other problems as well. For example, the SAT plan algorithm uses logic for planning and inductive logic programming is a method for learning. Several different forms of logic are used in AI research. Propositional or sentential logic is the logic of statements which can be true or false. First order logic also allows the use of quantifiers and predicates and can express facts about objects, their properties, and their relations with each other. Fuzzy logic, 
is a version of first-order logic which allows the truth of a statement to be represented as a value between 0 and 1, rather than simply true or false. Fuzzy systems can be used for uncertain reasoning and have been widely used in modern industrial and consumer product control systems. Subjective logic models uncertainty in a different and more explicit manner than fuzzy logic. A given binomial opinion satisfies belief plus disbelief plus uncertainty equals 1 within a beta distribution. By this method, ignorance can be distinguished from probabilistic statements that an agent makes with high confidence. Default logics, non-monotonic logics, and circumscription are forms of logic designed to help with default reasoning and the qualification problem. Several extensions of logic have been designed to handle specific domains of knowledge, such as, description logics, situation calculus, event calculus, and fluent calculus, causal calculus, belief calculus, and modal logics. Many problems in AI require the agent to operate with incomplete or uncertain information. AI researchers have devised a number of powerful tools to solve these problems using methods from probability theory and economics. Bayesian networks are a very general tool that can be used for a large number of problems, reasoning, learning, planning and perception. Bayesian networks are used in AdSense to choose what ads to place and on Xbox Live to rate and match players. Probabilistic algorithms can also be used for filtering, prediction, smoothing and finding explanations for streams of data, helping perception systems to analyze processes that occur over time. A key concept from the science of economics is utility, a measure of how valuable something is to an intelligent agent. Precise mathematical tools have been developed that analyze how an agent can make choices and plan, using decision theory, decision analysis, and information value theory. These tools include models such as Markov decision processes, dynamic decision networks, game theory, and mechanism design. The simplest AI applications can be divided into two types classifiers and controllers. Controllers do, however, also classify conditions before inferring actions, and therefore classification forms a central part of many AI systems. Classifiers are functions that use pattern matching to determine a closest match. They can be tuned according to examples, making them very attractive for use in AI. These examples are known as observations or patterns. In supervised learning, each pattern belongs to a certain predefined class. A class can be seen as a decision that has to be made. All the observations combined with their class labels are known as a data set. When a new observation is received, that observation is classified based on previous experience. A classifier can be trained in various ways, there are many statistical and machine learning approaches. The decision tree is perhaps the most widely used machine learning algorithm. Other widely used classifiers are the neural network, k-nearest neighbor algorithm, kernel methods such as the support vector machine, Gaussian mixture model and the extremely popular naive Bayes classifier. The performance of these classifiers have been compared over a wide range of tasks. Classifier performance depends greatly on the characteristics of the data to be classified. There is no single classifier that works best on all given problems, this is also referred to as the no-free-lunch theorem. Determining a suitable classifier for a given problem is still more an art than science. Neural networks, or neural nets, were inspired by the architecture of neurons in the human brain. A simple neuron N accepts input from multiple other neurons, each of which, 
when activated, cast a weighted vote for or against whether neuron N should itself activate. Learning requires an algorithm to adjust these weights based on the training data, one simple algorithm is to increase the weight between two connected neurons when the activation of one triggers the successful activation of another. The net forms concepts that are distributed among a subnetwork of shared neurons that tend to fire together, a concept meaning leg might be coupled with a subnetwork meaning foot that includes the sound for foot. Neurons have a continuous spectrum of activation, in addition, Neurons can process inputs in a nonlinear way rather than weighing straightforward votes. Modern neural nets can learn both continuous functions and, surprisingly, digital logical operations. Neural networks' early successes included predicting the stock market and a mostly self driving car. In the 2010s, Advances in neural networks using deep learning thrust AI into widespread public consciousness and contributed to an enormous upshift in corporate AI spending, for example, AI-related M&A in 2017 was over 25 times as large as in 2015. The study of non-learning artificial neural networks began in the decade before the field of AI research was founded in the work of Walter Pitts and Warren McAlouch. Frank Rosenblatt invented the Perceptron, a learning network with a single layer, similar to the old concept of linear regression. Early pioneers also include Alexei Grigorevich Ivoknenko, Tyuvo Kohonen, Stephen Grossberg, Kunihiko Fukushima, Christoph von der Malsberg, David Wilshaw, Shunichi Amari, Bernard Widrow, John Hopfield, Eduardo R. K. Aniello, and others. The main categories of networks are acyclic or feed-forward neural networks and recurrent neural networks. Among the most popular feed-forward networks are perceptrons, multilayer perceptrons, and radial basis networks. Neural networks can be applied to the problem of intelligent control or learning, using such techniques as Hebbian learning, GMDH or competitive learning. Today, neural networks are often trained by the back-propagation algorithm, which had been around since 1970 as the reverse mode of automatic differentiation published by Seppola Nainma and was introduced to neural networks by Paul Werbos. Hierarchical temporal memory is an approach that models some of the structural and algorithmic properties of the neocortex. In short, most neural networks use some form of gradient descent on a hand-created neural topology. However, some research groups, such as Uber, argue that simple neuroevolution to mutate new neural network topologies and weights may be competitive with sophisticated gradient descent approaches. One advantage of neuroevolution is that it may be less prone to get caught in dead ends. Deep learning is any artificial neural network that can learn a long chain of causal links. For example, a feed-forward network with six hidden layers can learn a seven-link causal chain and has a credit assignment path depth of seven. Many deep learning systems need to be able to learn chains ten or more causal links in length. Deep learning has transformed many important subfields of artificial intelligence, including computer vision, speech recognition, natural language processing and others. According to one overview, the expression deep learning was introduced to the machine learning community by Rena Dechter in 1986 and gained traction after Igor Eisenberg and colleagues introduced it to artificial neural networks in 2000. The first functional deep learning networks were published by Alexei Grigorevich Ivoknenko and V. G. Lapa in 1965. These networks are trained one layer at a time. 
Ivoknenko's 1971 paper describes the learning of a deep feed-forward multi-layer perceptron with eight layers, already much deeper than many later networks. In 2006, a publication by Jeffrey Hinton and Ruslan Salakutdinov introduced another way of pre-training many-layered feed-forward neural networks one layer at a time treating each layer in turn as an unsupervised restricted Boltzmann machine, then using supervised back propagation for fine-tuning. Similar to shallow artificial neural networks, deep neural networks can model complex nonlinear relationships. Over the last few years, Advances in both machine learning algorithms and computer hardware have led to more efficient methods for training deep neural networks that contain many layers of nonlinear hidden units and a very large output layer. Deep learning often uses convolutional neural networks, whose origins can be traced back to the neocognitron introduced by Kunihiko Fukushima in 1980. In 1989, Yan L. E. Kun and colleagues applied back propagation to such an architecture. In the early 2000s, in an industrial application, CNNs already processed an estimated 10% to 20% of all the checks written in the U.S. Since 2011, fast implementations of CNNs on GPUs have won many visual pattern recognition competitions. CNNs with 12 convolutional layers were used in conjunction with reinforcement learning by DeepMind's AlphaGo Lee, the program that beat a top Go champion in 2016. Early on, deep learning was also applied to sequence learning with recurrent neural networks which are in theory Turing complete and can run arbitrary programs to process arbitrary sequences of inputs. The depth of an RNN is unlimited and depends on the length of its input sequence, thus, an RNN is an example of deep learning. RNNs can be trained by gradient descent but suffer from the vanishing gradient problem. In 1992, it was shown that unsupervised pre-training of a stack of recurrent neural networks can speed up subsequent supervised learning of deep sequential problems. Numerous researchers now use variants of a deep learning recurrent NN called the Long Short Term Memory Network published by Hawk Ryder and Schmidt Huber in 1997. LSTM is often trained by connectionist temporal classification. At Google, Microsoft, and Beta this approach has revolutionized speech recognition. For example, in 2015, Google's speech recognition experienced a dramatic performance jump of 49% through CTC-trained LSTM, which is now available through Google Voice to billions of smartphone users. Google also used LSTM to improve machine translation, language modeling and multilingual language processing. LSTM combined with CNNs also improved automatic image captioning and a plethora of other applications. Early symbolic AI inspired Lisp and Prolog, which dominated early AI programming. Modern AI development often uses mainstream languages such as Python or C++, or niche languages such as Wolfram language. In 1950, Alan Turing proposed a general procedure to test the intelligence of an agent now known as the Turing test. This procedure allows almost all the major problems of artificial intelligence to be tested. However, it is a very difficult challenge and at present all agents fail. Artificial intelligence can also be evaluated on specific problems such as small problems in chemistry, handwriting recognition, and game playing. Such tests have been termed subject matter expert Turing tests. Smaller problems provide more achievable goals and there are an ever-increasing number of positive results. For example, performance at drafts is optimal 
performance at chess is high human and nearing superhuman and performance at many everyday tasks is subhuman. A quite different approach measures machine intelligence through tests which are developed from mathematical definitions of intelligence. Examples of these kinds of tests start in the late 90s devising intelligence tests using notions from Kolmogorov complexity and data compression. Two major advantages of mathematical definitions are their applicability to non-human intelligences and their absence of a requirement for human testers. A derivative of the Turing test is the completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. As the name implies, this helps to determine that a user is an actual person and not a computer posing as a human. In contrast to the standard Turing test, CAPTCHA is administered by a machine and targeted to a human as opposed to being administered by a human and targeted to a machine. A computer asks a user to complete a simple test then generates a grade for that test. Computers are unable to solve the problem, so correct solutions are deemed to be the result of a person taking the test. A common type of CAPTCHA is the test that requires the typing of distorted letters, numbers, or symbols that appear in an image undecipherable by a computer. AI is relevant to any intellectual task. Modern artificial intelligence techniques are pervasive and are too numerous to list here. Frequently, when a technique reaches mainstream use, it is no longer considered artificial intelligence, this phenomenon is described as the AI effect. High-profile examples of AI include autonomous vehicles, medical diagnosis, creating art, proving mathematical theorems, playing games, search engines, online assistants, image recognition in photographs, spam filtering, prediction of judicial decisions and targeting online advertisements. With social media sites overtaking TV as a source for news for young people and news organizations increasingly reliant on social media platforms for generating distribution, major publishers now use artificial intelligence technology to post stories more effectively and generate higher volumes of traffic. There are a number of competitions and prizes to promote research in artificial intelligence. The main areas promoted are, general machine intelligence, conversational behavior, data mining, robotic cars, robot soccer and games. Artificial intelligence is breaking into the healthcare industry by assisting doctors. According to Bloomberg Technology, Microsoft has developed AI to help doctors find the right treatments for cancer. There is a great amount of research and drugs developed relating to cancer. In detail, there are more than 800 medicines and vaccines to treat cancer. This negatively affects the doctors, because there are too many options to choose from, making it more difficult to choose the right drugs for the patients. Microsoft is working on a project to develop a machine called Hanover. Its goal is to memorize all the papers necessary to cancer and help predict which combinations of drugs will be most effective for each patient. One project that is being worked on at the moment is fighting myeloid leukemia, a fatal cancer where the treatment has not improved in decades. Another study was reported to have found that artificial intelligence was as good as trained doctors in identifying skin cancers. Another study is using artificial intelligence to try and monitor multiple high-risk patients, and this is done by asking each patient numerous questions based on data acquired from live doctor-to-patient interactions. According to CNN, there was a recent study by surgeons at the Children's National Medical Center in Washington which successfully demonstrated surgery with an autonomous robot. The team supervised the robot while it performed soft tissue surgery, 
stitching together a pig's bowel during open surgery, and doing so better than a human surgeon, the team claimed. IBM has created its own artificial intelligence computer, the IBM Watson, which has beaten human intelligence. Watson not only won at the game show Jeopardy! against former champions, but, was declared a hero after successfully diagnosing a woman who was suffering from leukemia. Advancements in AI have contributed to the growth of the automotive industry through the creation and evolution of self-driving vehicles. As of 2016, there are over 30 companies utilizing AI into the creation of driverless cars. A few companies involved with AI include Tesla, Google, and Apple. Many components contribute to the functioning of self-driving cars. These vehicles incorporate systems such as braking, lane changing, collision prevention, navigation and mapping. Together, these systems, as well as high-performance computers, are integrated into one complex vehicle. Recent developments in autonomous automobiles have made the innovation of self-driving trucks possible, though they are still in the testing phase. The UK government has passed legislation to begin testing of self-driving truck platoons in 2018. Self-driving truck platoons are a fleet of self-driving trucks following the lead of one non-self-driving truck so the truck platoons aren't entirely autonomous yet. Meanwhile, the Daimler, a German automobile corporation, is testing the Freightliner Inspiration which is a semi-autonomous truck that will only be used on the highway. One main factor that influences the ability for a driverless automobile to function is mapping. In general, the vehicle would be pre-programmed with a map of the area being driven. This map would include data on the approximations of street light and curb heights in order for the vehicle to be aware of its surroundings. However, Google has been working on an algorithm with the purpose of eliminating the need for pre-programmed maps and instead, creating a device that would be able to adjust to a variety of new surroundings. Some self-driving cars are not equipped with steering wheels or brake pedals, so there has also been research focused on creating an algorithm that is capable of maintaining a safe environment for the passengers in the vehicle through awareness of speed and driving conditions. Another factor that is influencing the ability for a driverless automobile is the safety of the passenger. To make a driverless automobile, engineers must program it to handle high-risk situations. These situations could include a head-on collision with pedestrians. The car's main goal should be to make a decision that would avoid hitting the pedestrians and saving the passengers in the car. But there is a possibility the car would need to make a decision that would put someone in danger. In other words, the car would need to decide to save the pedestrians or the passengers. The programming of the car in these situations is crucial to a successful driverless automobile. Financial institutions have long used artificial neural network systems to detect charges or claims outside of the norm, flagging these for human investigation. The use of AI in banking can be traced back to 1987 when Security Pacific National Bank in U.S. set up a fraud prevention task force to counter the unauthorized use of debit cards. Programs like Casisto and MoneyStream are using AI in financial services. Banks use artificial intelligence systems today to organize operations, maintain bookkeeping, invest in stocks, and manage properties. AI can react to changes overnight or when business is not taking place. In August 2001, robots beat humans in a simulated financial trading competition. AI has also reduced fraud and financial crimes by monitoring behavioral patterns of users for any abnormal changes or anomalies.
the use of AI machines in the market in applications such as online trading and decision-making has changed major economic theories. For example, AI-based buying and selling platforms have changed the law of supply and demand in that it is now possible to easily estimate individualized demand and supply curves and thus individualized pricing. Furthermore, AI machines reduce information asymmetry in the market and thus making markets more efficient while reducing the volume of trades. Furthermore, AI in the markets limits the consequences of behavior in the markets again making markets more efficient. Other theories where AI has had impact include in rational choice, rational expectations, game theory, Lewis turning point, portfolio optimization, and counterfactual thinking. In video games, Artificial intelligence is routinely used to generate dynamic purposeful behavior in non-player characters. In addition, well-understood AI techniques are routinely used for pathfinding. Some researchers consider NPC AI in games to be a solved problem for most production tasks. Games with more atypical AI include the AI director of Left 4 Dead and the neuroevolutionary training of Platoons and Supreme Commander 2. A platform is defined as some sort of hardware architecture or software framework, that allows software to run. As Rodney Brooks pointed out many years ago, it is not just the artificial intelligence software that defines the AI features of the platform, but rather the actual platform itself that affects the AI that results, i.e., there needs to be work in AI problems on real-world platforms rather than in isolation. A wide variety of platforms has allowed different aspects of AI to develop ranging from expert systems such as Psyche to deep learning frameworks to robot platforms such as the Roomba with open interface. Recent advances in deep artificial neural networks and distributed computing have led to a proliferation of software libraries, including deep learning 4J, TensorFlow, Theano, and Torch. Collective AI is a platform architecture that combines individual AI into a collective entity, in order to achieve global results from individual behaviors. With its collective structure, developers can crowdsource information and extend the functionality of existing AI domains on the platform for their own use, as well as continue to create and share new domains and capabilities for the wider community and greater good. As developers continue to contribute, the overall platform grows more intelligent and is able to perform more requests, providing a scalable model for greater communal benefit. Organizations like SoundHound Inc. and the Harvard John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences have used this collaborative AI model. A McKinsey Global Institute study found a shortage of 1.5 million highly trained data and AI professionals and managers and a number of private boot camps have developed programs to meet that demand, including free programs like the Data Incubator or paid programs like General Assembly. Amazon, Google, Facebook, IBM, and Microsoft have established a non-profit partnership to formulate best practices on artificial intelligence technologies, advance the public's understanding, and to serve as a platform about artificial intelligence. They stated, this partnership on AI will conduct research, organize discussions, provide thought leadership consult with relevant third parties, respond to questions from the public and media, and create educational material that advance the understanding of AI technologies including machine perception, learning, and automated reasoning. Apple joined other tech companies as a founding member of the Partnership on AI in January 2017. The corporate members will make financial and research contributions to the group, while engaging with the scientific community to bring academics onto the board.
there are three philosophical questions related to AI. Can a machine be intelligent? Can it think? Widespread use of artificial intelligence could have unintended consequences that are dangerous or undesirable. Scientists from the Future of Life Institute, among others, described some short-term research goals to see how AI influences the economy, the laws and ethics that are involved with AI and how to minimize AI security risks. In the long term, the scientists have proposed to continue optimizing function while minimizing possible security risks that come along with new technologies. Competitions and Prizes Healthcare Automotive Finance and Economics Video Games Platforms Education in AI Partnership on AI Machines with intelligence have the potential to use their intelligence to make ethical decisions. Research in this area includes machine ethics, artificial moral agents, and the study of malevolent versus friendly AI. The development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, it will take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. A common concern about the development of artificial intelligence is the potential threat it could pose to humanity. This concern has recently gained attention after mentions by celebrities including Stephen Hawking, Bill Gates, and Elon Musk. A group of prominent tech titans including Peter Thiel, Amazon Web Services and Musk have committed $1 billion to OpenAI, a non-profit company aimed at championing responsible AI development. The opinion of experts within the field of artificial intelligence is mixed, with sizable fractions both concerned and unconcerned by risk from eventual superhumanly capable AI. In his book Superintelligence, Nick Bostrom provides an argument that artificial intelligence will pose a threat to mankind. He argues that sufficiently intelligent AI, if it chooses actions based on achieving some goal, will exhibit convergent behavior such as acquiring resources or protecting itself from being shut down. If this AI's goals do not reflect humanity's one example as an AI told to compute as many digits of pi as possible it might harm humanity in order to acquire more resources or prevent itself from being shut down, ultimately to better achieve its goal. For this danger to be realized, the hypothetical AI would have to overpower or outthink all of humanity which a minority of experts argue is a possibility far enough in the future to not be worth researching. Other counter-arguments revolve around humans being either intrinsically or convergently valuable from the perspective of an artificial intelligence. Concern over risk from artificial intelligence has led to some high-profile donations and investments. In January 2015, Elon Musk donated $10 million to the Future of Life Institute to fund research on understanding AI decision-making. The goal of the Institute is to grow wisdom with which we manage the growing power of technology. Musk also funds companies developing artificial intelligence such as Google DeepMind and Vicarious to just keep an eye on what's going on with artificial intelligence. I think there is potentially a dangerous outcome there. Development of militarized artificial intelligence is a related concern. Currently, 50-plus countries are researching battlefield robots, including the United States, China, Russia, and the United Kingdom. Many people concerned about risk from super-intelligent AI also want to limit the use of artificial soldiers. Joseph Wee Eisenbaum wrote that AI applications cannot, 
by definition, successfully simulate genuine human empathy and that the use of AI technology in fields such as customer service or psychotherapy was deeply misguided. We Eisenbaum was also bothered that AI researchers were willing to view the human mind as nothing more than a computer program. To We Eisenbaum these points suggest that AI research devalues human life. The relationship between automation and employment is complicated. While automation eliminates old jobs, it also creates new jobs through microeconomic and macroeconomic effects. Unlike previous waves of automation, many middle-class jobs may be eliminated by artificial intelligence, the economist states that the worry that AI could do to white-collar jobs what steam power did to blue-collar ones during the Industrial Revolution is worth taking seriously. Subjective estimates of the risk vary widely. For example, Michael Osborne and Carl Benedict Frey estimate 47% of U.S. jobs are at high risk of potential automation, while an OECD report classifies only 9% of U.S. jobs as high risk. Jobs at extreme risk range from paralegals to fast food cooks, while job demand is likely to increase for care-related professions ranging from personal health care to the clergy. Author Martin Ford and others go further and argue that a large number of jobs are routine, repetitive, and predictable. Ford warns that these jobs may be automated in the next couple of decades, and that many of the new jobs may not be accessible to people with average capability, even with retraining. Economists point out that in the past technology has tended to increase rather than reduce total employment but acknowledge that we're in uncharted territory with AI. This raises the issue of how ethically the machine should behave towards both humans and other AI agents. This issue was addressed by Wendell Wallach in his book titled Moral Machines in which he introduced the concept of artificial moral agents. For Wallach, AMAs have become a part of the research landscape of artificial intelligence as guided by its two central questions which he identifies as does humanity want computers making moral decisions and can bots really be moral? For Wallach the question is not centered on the issue of whether machines can demonstrate the equivalent of moral behavior in contrast to the constraints which society may place on the development of AMAs. The field of machine ethics is concerned with giving machines ethical principles, or a procedure for discovering a way to resolve the ethical dilemmas they might encounter, enabling them to function in an ethically responsible manner through their own ethical decision-making. The field was delineated in the AAAI Fall 2005 Symposium on Machine Ethics past research concerning the relationship between technology and ethics has largely focused on responsible and irresponsible use of technology by human beings, with a few people being interested in how human beings ought to treat machines. In all cases, only human beings have engaged in ethical reasoning. The time has come for adding an ethical dimension to at least some machines. Recognition of the ethical ramifications of behavior involving machines, as well as recent and potential developments in machine autonomy, necessitate this. In contrast to computer hacking, software property issues, privacy issues and other topics normally ascribed to computer ethics, machine ethics is concerned with the behavior of machines towards human users and other machines. Research in machine ethics is key to alleviating concerns with autonomous systems it could be argued that the notion of autonomous machines without such a dimension is at the root of all fear concerning machine intelligence. Further, investigation of machine ethics could enable the discovery of problems with current ethical theories, advancing our thinking about ethics. Machine ethics is sometimes referred to as machine morality, computational ethics, or computational morality. 
A variety of perspectives of this nascent field can be found in the collected edition Machine Ethics that stems from the AAAI Fall 2005 Symposium on Machine Ethics. Political scientist Charles T. Rubin believes that AI can be neither designed nor guaranteed to be benevolent. He argues that any sufficiently advanced benevolence may be indistinguishable from malevolence. Humans should not assume machines or robots would treat us favorably, because there is no a priori reason to believe that they would be sympathetic to our system of morality, which has evolved along with our particular biology. Hyperintelligent software may not necessarily decide to support the continued existence of humanity, and would be extremely difficult to stop. This topic has also recently begun to be discussed in academic publications as a real source of risks to civilization, humans, and planet Earth. Physicist Stephen Hawking, Microsoft founder Bill Gates, and SpaceX founder Elon Musk have expressed concerns about the possibility that AI could evolve to the point that humans could not control it with Hawking theorizing that this could spell the end of the human race. One proposal to deal with this is to ensure that the first generally intelligent AI is friendly AI, and will then be able to control subsequently developed ACE. Some question whether this kind of check could really remain in place. Leading AI researcher Rodney Brooks writes, I think it is a mistake to be worrying about us developing malevolent AI any time in the next few hundred years. I think the worry stems from a fundamental error in not distinguishing the difference between the very real recent advances in a particular aspect of AI, and the enormity and complexity of building sentient volitional intelligence. If an AI system replicates all key aspects of human intelligence, Will that system also be sentient? Will it have a mind which has conscious experiences? This question is closely related to the philosophical problem as to the nature of human consciousness, generally referred to as the hard problem of consciousness. Computationalism is the position in the philosophy of mind that the human mind or the human brain is an information processing system and that thinking is a form of computing. Computationalism argues that the relationship between mind and body is similar or identical to the relationship between software and hardware and thus may be a solution to the mind-body problem. This philosophical position was inspired by the work of AI researchers and cognitive scientists in the 1960s and was originally proposed by philosophers Jerry Fodor and Hilary Putnam. The philosophical position that John Searle has named strong AI states, the appropriately programmed computer with the right inputs and outputs would thereby have a mind in exactly the same sense human beings have minds. Searle counters this assertion with his Chinese room argument, which asks us to look inside the computer and try to find where the mind might be. Mary Shelley S. Frankenstein considers a key issue in the ethics of artificial intelligence, if a machine can be created that has intelligence, could it also feel? If it can feel, does it have the same rights as a human? The idea also appears in modern science fiction, such as the film AI, Artificial Intelligence, in which humanoid machines have the ability to feel emotions. This issue, now known as robot rights, is currently being considered by, for example, California's Institute for the Future, although many critics believe that the discussion is premature. Some critics of transhumanism argue that any hypothetical robot rights would lie on a spectrum with animal rights and human rights. The subject is profoundly discussed in the 2010 documentary film Plug and Pray. Are there limits to how intelligent machines or human-machine hybrids can be? 
A superintelligence, hyperintelligence, or superhuman intelligence is a hypothetical agent that would possess intelligence far surpassing that of the brightest and most gifted human mind. Superintelligence may also refer to the form or degree of intelligence possessed by such an agent. If research into strong AI produced sufficiently intelligent software, it might be able to reprogram and improve itself. The improved software would be even better at improving itself, leading to recursive self-improvement. The new intelligence could thus increase exponentially and dramatically surpass humans. Science fiction writer Werner Ving named this scenario singularity. Technological singularity is when accelerating progress in technologies will cause a runaway effect wherein artificial intelligence will exceed human intellectual capacity and control, thus radically changing or even ending civilization. Because the capabilities of such an intelligence may be impossible to comprehend, the technological singularity is an occurrence beyond which events are unpredictable or even unfathomable. Ray Kurzweil has used Moore's law to calculate that desktop computers will have the same processing power as human brains by the year 2029, and predicts that the singularity will occur in 2045. You awake one morning to find your brain has another lobe functioning. Invisible, this auxiliary lobe answers your questions with information beyond the realm of your own memory suggests plausible courses of action, and asks questions that help bring out relevant facts. You quickly come to rely on the new lobe so much that you stop wondering how it works. You just use it. This is the dream of artificial intelligence. Robot designer Hans Moravec Cyberneticist Kevin Warwick and inventor Ray Kurzweil have predicted that humans and machines will merge in the future into cyborgs that are more capable and powerful than either. This idea, called transhumanism, which has roots in Aldous Huxley and Robert Edinger, has been illustrated in fiction as well, for example in the manga Ghost in the Shell and the science fiction series Dune. In the 1980s artist Hajime Sorayama's Sexy Robots series were painted and published in Japan depicting the actual organic human form with lifelike muscular metallic skins and later the Genoids book followed that was used by or influenced movie makers including George Lucas and other creatives. Sorayama never considered these organic robots to be real part of nature but always unnatural product of the human mind a fantasy existing in the mind even when realized in actual form. Edward Fredkin argues that artificial intelligence is the next stage in evolution, an idea first proposed by Samuel Butler as Darwin Among the Machines, and expanded upon by George Dyson in his book of the same name in 1998. Thought-capable artificial beings appeared as storytelling devices since antiquity. The implications of a constructed machine exhibiting artificial intelligence have been a persistent theme in science fiction since the 20th century. Early stories typically revolved around intelligent robots. The word robot itself was coined by Carol Apec in his 1921 play R.U.R., the title standing for Rossum's Universal Robots. Later, the SF writer Isaac Asimov developed the three laws of robotics. He subsequently explored these in his many books, most notably the Multivac series about a superintelligent computer of the same name. Asimov's laws are often brought up during layman discussions of machine ethics, while almost all artificial intelligence researchers are familiar with Asimov's laws through popular culture they generally consider the laws useless for many reasons, one of which is their ambiguity. The novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, by Philip K. Dick, tells a science fiction story about androids and humans clashing in a futuristic world. 
Elements of artificial intelligence include the empathy box, mood organ, and the androids themselves. Throughout the novel, Dick portrays the idea that human subjectivity is altered by technology created with artificial intelligence. Nowadays AI is firmly rooted in popular culture, intelligent robots appear in innumerable works. HAL 9000 the murderous computer in charge of the Discovery One spaceship in Arthur C. Clarke's and Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey, is an example of the common robotic rampage archetype in science fiction movies. The Terminator and The Matrix provide additional widely familiar examples. In contrast, the rare loyal robots such as Gort from The Day the Earth Stood Still and Bishop from Aliens are less prominent in popular culture. See also, Logic Machines in Fiction and List of Fictional Computers. Philosophy and Ethics The Limits of Artificial General Intelligence Potential Risks and Moral Reasoning Existential Risk Devaluation of humanity Decrease in demand for human labor Artificial moral agents Machine ethics Malevolent and friendly AI Machine consciousness, sentience and mind Consciousness Computationalism and functionalism Strong AI hypothesis Robot rights Superintelligence Technological singularity Transhumanism In fiction Explanatory notes AI textbooks History of AI Other sources